uh, communication and influence is where we're going to start and it's where we're going to stay uh, for a good uh, amount of time this afternoon. Okay, so what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the two types of communication. We're actually probably going to look at more than two types uh, by the time we get into it. Uh, in what order should we communicate? So we'll look at the order of communication. Uh, what is influence? Uh, what are the six weapons of influence? Uh, when is influence manipulation? Talk about that as well, because there's a these tools you can use for influencing and manipulation, so we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're doing the right thing with them. Uh, we're also going to look at body language and blockers to communication and so on and so on. Lots more things that I couldn't fit on this page that we're going to look at uh, today. So, um, who knows that sketch? A few people nodding at me. Now, it will depend on your age. Because <laughs> I did this to a group of students the other day and none of them knew what it was. And I felt... Sam, Sam, do you know? It, <laughs> that, that was a bit harsh, wasn't it? That was a little bit harsh. <laughs> oh, all right, we, we, have, we have good communication. <laughs> Brilliant, I love it, I love it. Some people may not know what that sketch is. The re I put it up there, uh, it's a sketch, it's, for, it's called I'm not sure whether the, the sketch is for, called Four Candles, but it's, it's what we know it is, the Four Candles sketch. Generally, this gentleman comes in and asks for four candles. The shopkeeper gives him four candles, and he says, no, handles for forks, and so on and so on. And the whole sketch is about miscommunication, basically, and how, he, how easy it is. Certainly in the English language, it's very easy to miscommunicate. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, to people, okay? So we're gonna look at that and why communication goes wrong um, and how this miscommunication uh, happens, okay? So let's look at that now uh, on the next uh, slide that we've got here. Now, I know this slide is quite uh, full and I know the writing's quite small, so I'm gonna take you through it and remember you will get a copy of these slides, okay? So what this is, is the communication process, okay? So what we've got here, is first of all over here we've got the sender. So the sender wants to communicate something, okay? What they then do is they encode that communique. Now what do I mean by encode? What I mean by encode is they send, they, get, they prepare the message in their brain based on their own frame of reference for life, okay? And if you think about frame of reference for a moment, frame of reference is every single thought you've ever had, seven to nine things at once, on average every seven seconds for the whole of your life. Okay, it makes you who you are, your, your filing cabinet in your head, if you like, or hard drive in your head, okay? All of that is put together, and then we have a perception of how the world works, okay? Now those perceptions can be very different. You could have two people that sit next to each other uh, and they could stand next to each other on the street. They could witness an accident and you would get two slightly different accounts of what happened. Even though the accident was the same thing for both of them, they would witness it in a slightly different way because we don't act, this is really key, important point guys, we don't act in accordance to reality we act in accordance to our perception of that reality, okay? This is why if you've ever been in an argument and somebody said to you, I, I can't believe you just said that, and you go, no, I, di I, di I didn't say that. I said this, this, and this. And they go, no, you no, you didn't. You said this, this, and this. Yeah? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Hey, if you want, Sam, if you want, you can take these slides home for the wife and yeah. uh, see how that... <laughs> See how that pans out for you, yeah? <laughs> but, but it's quite common, isn't it, Sam? It's quite common, you know, that it happens, you know? You say one thing, somebody hears something slightly different. And the main reason is because when we encode a message, we encode it with our own perception. We then choose the media of that message. So we're either going to face-to-face, speak it, um, see it, um, or, or email or text or whatever, okay? The receiver then gets the message, 
The receiver then decodes that message based on their frame of reference for life, not yours. And then they act on the message, okay? So the disconnect in communication is between the encoding and the decoding in the message. It becomes more complicated when the message is written because then the, the disconnect might even be the media that's disconnected. So we'll come on to written communications as we go further down the line, okay? So just to make this point, the problem with communication generally lies between encoding and decoding of messages that are going on. So what we need to do, and this whole um, module is, is to help you with this, what we need to do is help people make sure that, that whatever that's been encoded, they try and explain it in such a way, the message that it can be decoded in a similar way. So the message is clear, concise, and the other person then can again go and act on the end of the message. Okay, so that's what we're gonna look at during the whole of this module. Just to give you a few reasons why communication is so important, this list is not exhaustive, okay? Um, quick, uh, quick at problem solving. Problems are solved a lot easier with clear communication. Strong decisions, easier to make decisions when you've got strong communication. More productivity. Um, if I was to run an employee engagement survey now, um, I could probably write down, would like better communication before I've got the results back, okay? I've run hundreds of employee engagement surveys over my time, and they all come back in the top five need more effective communication, okay? And the reason that happens is because communication isn't something you do once and then it's done. Communication is something that you do over and over and over and over and over again. And sometimes we get great at it, and then sometimes we, we lose a little bit of it, and it kind of keeps coming around like a, like a revolution, if you like. Uh, consistency and workflow, uh, strong business relations, uh, relationships, better control over things when you've got information and communication. Um, it will advance the professional image. This is a really important one people don't even think of. If you are known as a company to your customers, your collaborators, as great communicators, your professional image shoots up many, many, many notches, okay? And think about, think about companies you use. Even in your personal lives, think about the companies, you know, like uh, I, I've got a situation where, for instance, Virgin Media, I've just put my bill up for no reason. I've just had a letter saying that's going up. I don't know if anybody else has had that. Uh, bill's going up. Um, now I've got to ring them. That, that is now causing me pain because their communication, when you've got to wait on hold for 30 minutes, is not very good, okay? So it, it will affect the image of you, your team, your department, and of course the organization as a whole, okay? Uh, and if, if it's, again, in line with that one, if you've got great communication, you will get a better response from stakeholders. In your case, you will get a better response from collaborators or any other stakeholders uh, that you have. Uh, and we will do a section on stakeholder management uh, in, uh, in your session number three, okay, when we get to it as well. Okay, good. Um, this was a survey that was done for top 10 most demanded soft skills during 2022. What will be the top 10 um, in-demand soft skills for this year? And you can see there, right at the top, communication. Communication isn't the first one in there. Uh, if you're interested, organization skills, team working, uh, punctuality, things like that. Um, uh, that. But that's also virtual punctuality as well these days. Critical thinking, social skills. Again, that comes into communication. Uh, creativity, interpersonal communication, even more, more communication, uh, adaptability and personality types down here. So again, all of these soft skills, these are the ones that are up there in demand. Okay, just thought that might be interesting. This one, this slide, really important for a couple of reasons, okay? So, 
This was done pre-COVID, this was, so it might have changed a little bit, okay? But this, um, uh, uh, the company um, uh, uh, um, at Smarp did, uh, did some research and this is what they came out with. 74% of employees have the feeling they are missing out on important information at work. 74%, okay? And the problem with that, if somebody kind of goes, oh right, well, we know we try our best. The problem with that is if you have a, a, a lot of people that think they're missing out on information, what they will do is they will make up their own. So in the absence of information, it is simply made up. And when people make stuff up, they don't make it up in a helpful way. Okay, we make it up uh, in a hindering way. Okay, uh, guys, I've lost a few. I've lost a few of your cameras. I hope you're not sneaking off and doing other work, everybody. If you can put your cameras on, please, that would be wonderful. Thank you. So, in the absence of information, we simply make stuff up. Okay, so it's important that employees have information. Uh, and to do that, we need to be able to communicate effectively. Because just moving, sometimes people get information movement mixed up with communication. So if you move information from one place to another, it doesn't necessarily mean you've communicated it. You've just moved it. Communication is only achieved when the encoder has sent the message to the decoder and the decoder has decoded and understood the message as it was intended to be sent. That takes a little bit more time and a little bit more effort and we'll go through how uh, we do that today, including things like body language uh, and things like that, okay? So, let's do one little exercise before we go and have our first break. What you will need for this is a piece of paper and a pen. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. I'm going to give you some instructions. All I would like you to do is follow my instructions. Okay, so you have a blank piece of paper and a pen. The first thing I want, uh, turn the page, uh, the paper landscape. Okay, just turn it landscape. Okay, now what I would like you to do uh, is draw a wavy line across the paper. Draw a wavy line across the paper. Okay. Then I would like you to draw a long line just on top of the wavy line. Can you say again, please? Yeah, I'd like you to draw a long line on top of the wavy line. What's the, what's the long line? You mean a straight line? Ah, I'm just, this, I'm, all I'm going to give you is that. All I'm going to give you is that. It, yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I'll be nice. A long straight line across the top it, of the it, wavy it line. It can only be as long as the, the paper though. Sure. Of course it can, yeah. Yeah, or it might not even be that long. So we'll just have to see, won't we? Yeah. Right, at the end of that straight line, I would like you to draw two little lines, one each end, going off it at a diagonal. Okay, so draw one line at each end of the long line, going off it at a diagonal. <laughs> the next thing I would like you to do is draw another line joining the end of the diagonal lines, joining them together. I might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're not the only one, to be honest. I'm the <laughs> no, you can't follow the instructions. Yeah? Did you say only one line? <clears throat> one line joining the two diagonal lines together. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing I want you to do is now draw another straight line perpendicular to the other line. Okay? So what I mean by that, if you don't get yeah, perpendicular, please. if if you if you if your one line is that way, I want you to draw a line that way. Okay? That's all I'm going to give you. 
The which line? The wavy line or the others? <laughs> the straight line, perpendicular to the straight line. What are the straight lines that you've drawn, okay? okay. And then finally, at the top of the straight perpendicular line, I want you to draw a triangle. At the top? Yeah, at the top. Okay. And now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to all... Have you should have understand that. It's I was going to say, is it bad if, if mine looks like a swastika? <laughs> oh, no! No! <laughs> well, what I would like you to do is show, hold your picture up to the camera to show everybody. Now, if you've got a blurred background, you may have to drop it off. Okay. You may have to take your blurred background off to see it. Uh, to show us. Uh, when you've done that, just hold it up and let's have a look. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so Sam's not a million miles away. Uh, oh, Anthony. Anthony. Oh, I like that. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, there's some, uh, there's some, there's some really interesting... <laughs> look at the different pictures. Now, guys, I'm pretty sure I gave you all the same instructions. Okay? But look at the different pictures, okay? What we should have had... <laughs> what we should have had was that. Okay? So, uh, Anthony, I think you were there, weren't you? With it? Sam, you were pretty there, weren't you? There was one line, I think. One line that was slightly out uh, of that. And there's a couple that got close. And then there was a couple that got nowhere near. <laughs> ah, you see, you see. Now, look, it's a little bit of fun, but you all got exactly the same instruction, but we got lots of different drawings, didn't we? Now, yes, you could argue my instructions can be clearer. Fine, I'll give you that. But even if they were as clear as they could be, I, I, I guarantee there'd still be a few people drawing different things. Okay, and that's where communication, that's a great example of where encoding and decoding goes wrong. Uh, between that yeah um, so when we come back after the break we're going to get into how we can make that communication quicker sleeker more helpful more informed how body language comes in tone of voice uh, when we use email and things like that we'll talk about all that sort of stuff before we get to influencing skills